Hello everyone and welcome to the last section of this course, which is called Deployment Scenarios. In this section we'll tackle some of the more advanced deployment scenarios and in my opinion those which are more suited to real-life enterprise deployments. So first of all we'll talk about how we can utilize the Office 365 content delivery network capability to actually host our deployment package assets from there. Next, we will cover how we can do pretty much the same thing only with Azure Storage as opposed to Office 365 CDN. And lastly, we'll talk about how we can meaningfully upgrade our existing solutions. The first video in the deployment scenario sections is called Deploying into Office 365 Content Delivery Network. We're going to take a look at the Office 365 CDN overview, and then we'll take a look how we can enable the public CDN capability in our tenant because it is not enabled by default. And lastly, we will show you how we can upgrade our solution that it works with Office 365 CDN. Let us get started. So most of you are familiar with the concept of content delivery network. It is a publicly available repository of hosted assets of various types. Now Office 365 is managed from PowerShell and we can do that by downloading the SharePoint Online Management Shell, an extension of PowerShell, running that and executing PowerShell commands against our Office 365 tenant. The way it works is it binds to certain paths which we specify and those paths should point to a document library or a subfolder of a document library. Also the definition supports wildcards in the paths. The wildcard in this scenario stands for the site collection. So in the parenthesis, the wildcard formal slash styles library means that everything inside the styles library on any of the sites will be considered as part of the content delivery network. One important thing to notice about Office 365 content delivery network is that assets will be only usable by requests originating from SharePoint Online. And this is done by filtering on the referrer header. The effective content delivery network address is formed based on the following template. HTTPS forward slash forward slash public CDN dot SharePoint Online dot com followed by our tenant host name. So in my case, it's oleglearnsp.sharepoint.com and then the site relative path of our document library or a subfolder. And this diagram is showing how all the pieces of Office 365 CDN work together. So firstly, we need to explicitly enable the capability through the PowerShell, add some specified paths to it, bind those to document libraries in our SharePoint online space, and then upload certain files as assets to those document libraries. This will trigger a job that will copy those files into the content delivery network and then we can access those files hosted in this location, of course under a different URL which I outlined in the previous slide. 
And this brings me to the demo section of this video. I'll show you how you can enable CDN using the PowerShell commands, then add a new CDN path, upload assets to the path in the SharePoint online document library, and update existing solution to look for assets in the new way. So the first thing you will want to do is go to the Microsoft website, find the SharePoint Online Management Shell download and download and install that. Once you have done the installation, you need to open the SharePoint Online Management Shell and connect to your administration tenant. And the URL for that is usually your tenant's hostname hyphen admin dot sharepoint dot com. You need to specify your credentials and click sign in. Now we need to execute the following command set hyphen spo tenant cdn enabled and also specifying the cdn type public. Just confirm and it will list you the CDN enabled locations. And by default, if you are doing this for the first time, you will have the asterisk forward slash master page and asterisk forward slash style library. I have also added one more location which is asterisk forward slash CDN. And we can do that by executing the following commandlet. Add hyphen SPO tenant CDN origin, specifying the CDN type, and then the original URL, asterisk forward slash CDN. After the command has been executed, you need to allow about 15 to 20 minutes for the connection to be established. After the time has passed, if you would upload any files to your CDN document library, they will be automatically available in the public CDN space. The next thing we need to do is go to our site collection and create a CDN document library there and upload assets to it. You can see here that I am in the root site collection and then in the CDN document library and also inside the app-customizer-assets. And I just uploaded the three files from my previous app-customizer extension project to here. Those files can be found in the temp and then deploy directory once you have executed the gulp bundle with a ship flag. The only thing left to do is go to our solution and change the CDN base URL property. Then repackage our solution and re-upload that to the app catalog. So this is the write manifests JSON file and we need to specify the new URL in here. You can see that this reflects the public cdn.sharepointonline.com, then the host name of your tenant, and then the name of the library and the subfolder. With this done, you need to do two commands in your terminal. The first one is bundle ship and the second one is package solution and then ship. You can re-upload your SP package file into the app catalog and you will be done. No need to redeploy your apps specifically if they have already been deployed. They will work just fine. And the end result will be looking like that. I believe this concludes our demonstration for current video.
I hope you guys enjoyed that and it was pretty self-explanatory. A few configuration changes and your solution now looks for the assets in the public CDN space, which is pretty neat. In the next video we'll talk about how we can do very similar thing with Azure Storage. Stay tuned. Bye.